And even if we do manage to get the right plastic into the right bins, what actually happens to our recycling after it's collected by our councils? I've been digging deep into various websites that keep a track of what we're doing with our waste and with our plastics and our recycling. And it's instantly obvious that we are not dealing with our plastics at home. That 665,000 tonnes of our plastics are being exported every year. Most used to go to China. But from 2018, the Chinese banned imports due to mounting environmental concerns. And so we found other places to send it. At the moment, the UK is exporting plastics to over a dozen countries, but the biggest number by far importing 129,000 tonnes of our plastics is Malaysia. So if I want to find out what's really happening to our recycling, I'm going to have to go a long way from home. I'm heading for a small town called Jenjurum, close to Malaysia's main seaport. Hello. One of you is CK? Yeah. Hello, hi. Hi, hi, hi CK, I'm you. Hugh. Shall I jump in with you? Yep, yeah, sure. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Town resident CK Lee is one of the founding members of a local environmental action group. They formed in July last year after realizing that an influx of imported plastics had led to a massive increase in plastic processing businesses. Not all of them are legal, and CKs offered to sneak me into one of the 33 local sites that have been discovered operating without licenses. This is used as the factory dump site, we believe. Look at this. It's awful. It is awful. After CK's group repeatedly reported this site to the authorities, it was finally shut down a few weeks ago. It's clear it was used for some sort of processing. We believe that the factory picked what they wanted mm -hmm. to be processed, and what they do not want, they just dump it here. And what they do not want is a lot. Yes, it's a lot, and it's whole mess, and yeah. totally stored in an illegal manner, you know, without dikes and the effluent just flow into the adjoining lands. There's a drain just yes, here. There's, there's a, a little stream yes. right between these two huge piles. Yes. And look at all these tiny, tiny particles of plastic here. Look at that. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that could get into the watercourse. Well, it's getting into the watercourse because this is the watercourse. Yes, that's correct. And it goes to, you know, common drain and then it flows to the river. The group soon realised that most of the plastic in these sites is being shipped in from abroad. I see a Tesco bag, but I know you've got Tesco over here. There's one for you, Hugh. Look. Oh, dear. Paddington Bear on an M&S carrier bag. Drinkaware.co.uk. That's pound sterling. We're in the UK, aren't we? We couldn't be anywhere else. I could put in this bag and take back to show people in the UK. I'm interested in these big bags. I'm pretty sure that's Welsh. I am a recycling bag. Rhonda, that's Wales. Yeah, Hugh, we don't like this stuff. UK being a leader in humanity, in human decency, environment protection. Please keep up with the good work, but please don't dump what you do not want at our backyard. You are rich, you have the resources, we are a developing nation. Stop the exporting of your plastic waste to our country. I, I completely hear you. Why should our waste end up here for you guys yes. to deal with? Let's go now. We've got to go. Awesome. Uh, somebody's coming. Our lookout's call to say they think someone's onto us. Let's go now. Yeah, we're coming, CK, we're coming. Since the authorities began closing illegal facilities in this town, there have been increasing reports of large piles of foreign plastics elsewhere. On a tip-off, 
I'm heading 250 kilometers north to an industrial area near the city of Ipo. We've been cross-referencing some of our research with the Greenpeace office here in Malaysia, and they've just pinged me some coordinates. Wow, look at that. What a mess. It's insane. Jesus, I've never seen anything like that. There doesn't seem to be anyone here, at least for the moment. We can get through here. Walk through that. It's like some dystopian nightmare. <laughs> it looks like another planet. It's like a plastic planet. Left exposed to sun and rain, these mountains of broken bales and mixed plastics are clearly never going to be recycled. And it's only moments before I start finding things that are all too familiar. Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's and Sainsbury's. Guys, you really shouldn't make your bags bright orange. You're making it too easy for me. Braintree District Council, Essex's finest. And it's not just Essex, we've got Milton Keynes here. We don't want unrecyclable rubbish. I mean, the whole thing's just nuts, isn't it? Something really sticks out there is utterly butterly. It's the other side of this horrendous trench. <laughs> That's pretty familiar. Celebrations, Milky Way. M&S, some cleaning product from Aldi. I've got Sainsbury's, I've got M&S, I've got Asda, I've got Aldi. This bale of plastics may not be related to the council bags I found, but it is mainly made up of the pots, tubs and trays that most UK councils tell us they are recycling. Look at the size of this site and what sort of chain is it in? What's the destiny of this bale? When we put this in our recycling back in the UK, we think we're doing the right thing. I do my recycling and I feel good about it, at least I used to. What, what do you think? I, I, I don't feel so good now. I feel embarrassed, I feel ashamed, I feel angry, I feel I've been lied to. And I really want to know who's responsible for this horrendous mess. Is it our local councils? Is it our government? Is it our supermarkets? Is it the manufacturers of these goods? They're all in it together. We're all part of this problem, and now we have to stop. Take a long, hard look at this stuff. Take a long, hard look at this and work out the right way to do things. Stop sending our plastic garbage thousands of miles over the sea. I'll take all this up with government and big business back in the UK. But aside from vast piles like this, there's a whole different problem foreign plastics are adding to. Greenpeace Malaysia's Heng Kia Chun tells me about another grave concern. This is plastic going up in smoke here. Yeah, you can see all the plastic out here. That's horrendous. And this is just smoke one... Smoke looks yeah, really toxic. It's just one part. And I can see we have many parts. There are many open burnings. This is normal, just to see this plastic open burning. Yeah, we also received like, uh, some complaints by the local community that they also like, suffer from the, all these... Like, Respiratory problems. Yeah, yeah. A lot of families in this small town are convinced that their health is being affected by the smoke from this open burning. I've come to meet one of them. Hello, Apu. I'm Hugh. How are you? Fine. Can I come in? Goodness me. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. How are you all? What a gathering. Who would like to speak a little bit about the experience you've been having here? I always thought, why is the air changing? Maybe it's something we're always guessing. How is this affecting your family? How, how is it for you? 
，呃，小孩子经常就是咳嗽，然后呢请假，上课没有去上，然后经常这样子的，就是好像好了又来，好了又来了。新年就是初五的时候还动了一个小手术，因为鼻子啊。Are you feeling well today? No. No? Why, why not? What happens? Because my nose bleeding, my eyes itchy, the air is smelly. Oh my God! That's you. How how did you feel when you have this? Sad. Sad. <coughs> when was this? This morning. This morning. How many times has this happened in the last couple of years? Many times. Think. 我觉得很难过，我很想带他受这个苦，你明白吗？就是不希望下一代有这样子的事情发生。I'm sorry. <笑> That was very intense and compelling. And the extra dimension that the substance that you think is harming your child is being sent across thousands of miles by other countries who don't even know what's happening to it when it gets here just makes it so much worse.